Okay, so for this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make my own OTG cables, otherwise known as host cables. These are cables you can either buy or make. They're pretty cheap online. I prefer making them because I can make them a lot quicker, sometimes cheaper than uh, ones you can buy online, and I don't have to wait for shipping. Uh, what an OTG cable is, it's a micro USB end that plugs into your cell phone or tablet, and on the other end it has a USB female input that allows connectivity for mice, keyboard, flash drives, and a whole bunch of other USB stuff that you can normally use on your PC. So for this video, you're going to need a micro USB cable. I picked up this cheap one from Dollar Tree. I recommend getting a cheap one. The cheaper the better, simply because they are built uh, with less uh, quality, so it's a lot easier to take apart and mod. Uh, but before we get into this, let's have a quick overview of what a host cable is, a better explanation, and even some uh, examples of what you can do with them. So for those of you who don't know what a micro USB host cable is, or uh, who knows what it is but doesn't know how it works, I'll explain it to you right now by first explaining what a normal micro USB charge and sync cable is. That way I can better explain it to you later on. Uh, so for starters, a micro USB cable has five pins in it, but only four of them are used. Uh, sometimes only two can be used, uh, but standard micro USB cables come with charge and sync, which uses four pins. Uh, so. So we have five pins right here. This is the micro USB, uh, your standard pin out. There's going to be V plus, which is the five volts, uh, data negative, data positive. This one right here is called the sense pin. This is the pin that's normally not used or that isn't used in charge and sync cables. And this pin to the far right will be ground. Um, so for most USB cables, micro USB cables, they only use four pins. Uh, for data transfer and for charge capabilities. Some only use two pins for just charge. These are the cheaper cables that no one wants to buy. Uh, and what makes an OTG cable different than that of a micro USB charge and sync is that the sense pin is grounded. And when this pin is grounded, it allows for compatible phones and tablets to accept devices such as flash drives, keyboards, uh, and mice, and all things alike. Here are some of my micro USB cables I have made before. Uh, this is by far one of my favorite ones. It's just a nice red one. It looks really professional. And this is the goal of this uh, video is to show you how to make a really nice looking one. That one that doesn't look like shit, which I have seen all over uh, uh, similar tutorials. Like they work, but they look bad. And that's just my opinion on them. Uh, this is my favorite one by far. It's a nice red one. I've had this one for a while. Very reliable. This one is probably my second favorite one because of how small it is. It's just a micro USB end right here with the mod to it going straight to a USB port. And this one right here is one of my all-time favorite devices to use on my phone. It is a PS3 controller with a selfie stick holder that I put my phone into. And I can plug this into my phone and play emulators and even some games that are compatible with uh, controllers. Um, so obviously, with a micro USB cable, you have this uh, this type of connection right here, which is the male connection. Now, obviously, you can't use the male connection for USB devices, so you have to have a female USB right here, and that'll be covered in this video. But first, let me show you what you can do exactly with a micro USB cable. So the first thing you want to do is just chop off the end of your micro USB cable. Leave a little bit of wire so that way you can identify the polarity later. Next you just want to take a very sharp razor knife or exacto blade and cut along the edge of the micro USB end. There's usually a seam to help guide you. This way you can free the metal housing.
After doing so, you'll be able to lift up the rubber enclosure. And now you can expose the metal housing. And then you just simply snip it off. Like I said, leave a little bit of wire to help you identify polarity later. Next, you're going to have to open up the metal enclosure, which seems a little tedious at first, but it really isn't. You just simply use a flathead screwdriver or your X-Acto knife and lift up the clasp. There are two clasps. There's one on top and one on the bottom. They're really easy to do. You just have to make sure you don't bend them too far so the metal can go back to its normal position. And after doing so, you'll be able to simply slide the metal housing off and expose all the pins. Be sure not to bend them. You don't want to bend them. Now to complete this mod, all you have to do is add a small solder bridge to the ground pin and the pin next to it. The ground pin can be identified using the black wire. Simply take a small soldering iron tip and create a small solder bridge. Usually not recommended for a lot of situations, but this seems to be applicable. And simply reinsert it into the metal housing. Make sure both the clasps click, so that way the metal housing doesn't slip off later. Next, you're going to need a USB port, female end. I use these ones um, I got offline. It came off of a thing called a USB hub man. It was a really cheap USB hub. It came with these really neat enclosures that I like. But you can use any USB you can find. I marked both sides with a sharpie to identify the negative or the ground. This way it makes finding the polarity a lot easier later on. And now I'm just cleaning up the scrap wire. Now this part is rather tedious if you haven't had any experience with soldering before. I'm going to join both of the micro USB and the USB female port together using nothing but the leads. Uh, it's, it's, you, it's possible to do it with wire, but I like doing it this way to save on wire and pretty much just keeping it as small as I possibly can. And we are finished. The next thing to do is to finish up the USB enclosure. The feed through for the cable is made round just to feed the cable through, so I'm going to have to cut it and use a file to make it nice and rectangular so that way the micro USB just fits flush inside of it.
And now I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid mail. This is an alternative to silicone. This way the housing can remain closed. I'm using a donor USB cable to keep all of the liquid mail from getting inside of the USB port. And now I'm just going to close it up and let it sit for a couple of hours. It's been about eight hours since the uh, liquid nail, since I put the liquid nail inside of the USB enclosure. So I'm going to pull it out for the first time. It's going to be a little hard, but it comes off relatively easily. Uh, let's plug in a flash drive. And now let's plug this into my phone and see if the host capability still works nothing got messed up let's plug it in usb connector connected and it should pop up a file interface right there so that means the host cable does indeed work um thank you guys for watching this video if you liked it feel free to comment subscribe and share and i will see you next time